Hi everybody, spatial data, we all collect it. Uh, Qfield is a good method to store it and uh, we went through that last year. It's my little boat. You can uh, go and collect uh, spatial data for your job but you can also do it uh, for your recreation as well. So with geology, I use it for field navigation, tracking my drill programs, rehab. Uh, this is obviously attached uh, to my database so uh, this allows me to report and, and register and, and do all of the uh, spatial data management that I have to do, including taking photos out in the field. Um, but uh, I've, I've been uh, starting to get a lot more intimately involved with uh, how Qfield can uh, store our, our spatial data. So what is Qfield? It's uh, released in 2019 as the open source uh, mobile application for QGIS. It, it works on the same engine as QGIS, so all of your symbologies and your constraints and your ways of setting up your uh, workspace are, are basically uh, uh, taken out into the field and, and now you have the availability to uh, not only store and capture your spatial data, but to organize it and, and report it for later. So this chat isn't going to be all the things you can do with Qfield, but it's highlighting how to build a very simple Qfield application for yourselves. As we all know, free and open source is, uh, is the name of the game out here. So we are trying to basically get together in a community and share uh, availabilities for us to uh, work together, basically. So today I'm going to show everybody how to make a point file, basically. Let's start off with these videos. So this is me creating a Qfield project in QGIS. So everything starts out with a, a base map. There's many ways you can get a base map. Here's me just basically selecting a little bit of uh, open street. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make a Qfield application for the storage of point data. So right off the bat, I'm just getting that little base map, putting it on, uh, on my layers, and this will allow me to uh, basically form the basis of, of uh, my spatial data organization system. Uh, I'm working offline, ensuring that uh, I've got my uh, spatial coordinate system set up. Okay, so now, now we've got a, a base map there. We have to set up a table. I like working in uh, geo packages. I'm sure everybody is familiar with different forms of, uh, of geo package and, and uh, spatial databases. Uh, what you have to do is create your, your, uh, your table uh, with a certain degree of, of dedication of, of making sure that you're uh, uh, catching all of the elements that you want to uh, store. So here I am, we've got a easting, northing, everything is talking with your primary key, which is uh, UUID at the top, and you have availability to uh, select the different types for all of these uh, data fields. So uh, typically for uh, numbers, you'll be switching uh, uh, fields that need numbers to uh, integers and keeping the other uh, more text derived fields as strings or text. Uh, so I'm just switching the data type to integer for the easting northings. Uh, what I'm doing is creating a, a fishing app basically to help me store my uh, spatial information when I'm out fishing. So I'm going to have different uh, attributes that I'm collecting in the field and, and uh, associating with these points. So as I'm creating my data table, I want to make sure that I'm uh, capturing all the information I need in one table. So this uh, involves making sure that you're uh, creating a geometry for your point and getting your spatial uh, reference ID uh, correct as well. So that's creating your spatial index. Happy days. We've basically made a geo package for our point file that we can start associating decisions basically on how you're uh, collecting. So here we go into the properties. This is the magic of this. Uh, so you'll be intimately familiar with the attributes form tab in your layer properties. 
where you start being able to uh, drag and drop designer. So you have to pull down your drag and drop designer and start making bins to keep all of your, uh, your fields nicely organized. So I'm creating a container via the green button and these are basically going to be your tabs in QField. So how it gets displayed in your mobile device is how you organize it here. So I've created three bins, one for input data, uh, one for metadata, and then one to collect photos. So after you've organized how your uh, attributes are, are displayed in QField, you will start uh, playing with the widgets and understanding uh, how else this is going to work. So, all right, so after we've organized our attributes, we want to decide how they're going to look. So I've pre-created a CSV with values and descriptions. So your value is what is stored in the database. Your description makes it a little bit easier for, uh, for you to understand what the, the secret code is. This is uh, a good time to start talking about constraints and uh, whether or not you want to have default values populate. So if you know you're a, a snapper um, likely area, you might have your default uh, uh, set to something that's uh, uh, probable. Um, while, you're, while you're setting up each of these attributes, you have to be aware of whether or not you uh, want to contain null values or whether or not uh, you need unique values and whether or not these constraints are enforced. So if you click those, uh, it's basically going to turn up red until you um, actually put something into that, uh, that data capture field. So we're going to leave that one on uh, enforce not null constraints and understand that little quotation marks are what is going to be uh, uh, s saved in there. So as we go down to another attribute here, we're going to uh, give value ranges of 0 to 360. So this is the direction that the boat is facing. And I put this uh, direction in here to allow for us to uh, have adaptive um, symbology to reflect that uh, direction as well. Uh, another option here that I'm going on is lure. Uh, this is basically an either or, a Boolean approach. So you can either have bait or lure, and that is just going to have a, uh, a value map there. So. When you click on the value map uh, widget option, that's the, the drop-down maps that you'll see in the application. Here we go on to uh, a couple of the other ones. We've assigned widgets. Uh, we can also have a nice calendar pop-up for uh, the date caught. So we have the availability to assign uh, default values for uh, the date caught as well, and if you use this little code now with uh, parentheses, that's going to give you uh, the date automatically um, and today's date as, as the widget. All right, here's another one that we're creating, another value map uh, to allow for the uh, distinction of who caught the fish, and, and these are just attributes that uh, that you're assigning to your uh, to your Q field application. Here's Cletus. Yeah. So we have to make sure that uh, uh, we're talking about photos because photos are a very useful um, thing to be catch capturing with Q field. So if you're on an offline environment, it's probably the best idea to have save your paths uh, relative paths. Um, depending on, on, yeah, if, if you're in a connected environment or not. Um, 
UUID. You don't want that to be editable. Uh, you don't want the easting and northing to be editable. These are all options that you have to uh, consider when you're building up this uh, point file. Uh, to automatically assign an easting, you do a little dollar sign X, and for uh, for northing, dollar sign Y, so that automatically populates your easting northing, uh, depending on your spatial reference system that you've set up, if you're UTM or not. And there we go for setting up forms. So we've got uh, got a few things uh, set up there already. Oh. I think I already saw that one. Let's make a point. So here we are still in QGIS. Um, we've turned on the edit editing and we're creating a point, and this is how the, the form that we just set up uh, will appear in Q field, uh, but you get to play with it in QGIS right off the bat. So you can see I had the steps of, I think it was 10, and, and it's uh, picking everything up. Uh, the constraint that I put in for the caught by, as well as the photo, means that you have to select something, and it's either uh, going to give you red until you've filled something in, then you get a little check mark and you've met the, re the requirements. So we can see that that point that I created uh, auto-populated the easting and northing, but unfortunately I forgot to do something with the UUID. And this is your primary key. This will be giving um, a randomly, somewhat randomly generated uh, UUID, so it will have um, a number that's uh, unique for that feature that you've created. So you can see that that's now given itself a identifying number and every single point will uh, have its own UUID there. So you can see I've already populated a whole bunch of these points now. Um, the goal is to get a symbology that makes it, uh, well, useful. Uh, and to help uh, spatially identify and visually identify your different um, values that you're keeping track of. So I'm going into the SDG area in QGIS, and these are just symbols that come with it. Uh, there's a little fish. And what we can do is start assigning that uh, direction that uh, uh, we're capturing of where the, the boat was uh, pointing, um, that field is now going to be influencing your marker. Uh, so if you were going north and your little fishy will be uh, looking north. And this is just one way that you can have adaptive symbologies uh, taken from the Q field engine and then it will be, um, it'll look exactly the same in your uh, Q field application. So you just go through and you can copy and paste your uh, your symbologies to make it a little bit quicker for yourself. Um, obviously changing the, the colors for your different uh, fish is going to help um, and you can change sizes as well. So here I am just selecting different colors and making the um, the symbology available. Changing the size. So you can get really complicated with your uh, stacking of symbologies. You can have different rules and uh, uh, different layers of, of symbologies on top of each other, uh, making a, a, a relatively complex way of displaying one table. So all we're doing right now is creating one table with different attributes that you can collect uh, different information and, and spatially represent them uh, here in Q, Q field. So we can add labels, you can write constraints and, and basically make really, really uh, um, complicated ways of displaying your spatial data. So here we go, we've got little sharks swimming different ways and you know there's a snapper who's caught going north. I think, 
That's the same one, probably. Yep. There we go. This might be our, our last slide. So just a, a, a very quick rule-based symbology. Uh, there's different ways to uh, keep track of that, but uh, basically just having um, ands and ors and being able to uh, have multiple markers on top. So um, what I'm doing here is basically assigning a, a little airplane for fish that you've let go and a little fire for the fish that you keep. And this is uh, just symbolized on the, uh, on the and and quotation marks. So if you go through this presentation later, it'll you know, be able to remember how to, uh, how to make these. <laughs> 